Hello gang, um, today I'm going to be talking about something that I want to try to make it as coherent as possible. Um, so basically, today I'm going to be talking about how the three Black Christmas films, the one from the 70s, the one from 2006, and the one from 2019, how each of them correlate with a different wave of feminism. So we're just gonna jump right in because I don't know if anybody gets my drift without me explaining myself. But um, Black Christmas is a Christmas horror movie about a bunch of sorority girls having to defend themselves from a serial killer on Christmas. So first I'm gonna be talking about the original Black Christmas from the 70s. So the original Black Christmas was incredibly groundbreaking it kind of pioneered the idea of the final girl, um, and this has nothing to do with feminism, but it did also um, pioneer the idea of the uh, point of view of the killer shot and also the killers in the house trope. Um, so I think that this movie perfectly matches up with the second wave of feminism, which was entirely based on uh, reproductive rights. Because I think Jess is a very interesting final character. Um, she's not your stereotypical girl, but she's also not like Ripley from Alien. You know where I mean, where I mean, what I mean, where she's like, in order to be taken seriously, she has to be incredibly masculine. I think that Jess is a very um, practical and smart final girl. Um, and actually one of the uh things that makes black christmas so ahead of its time is that the final girl um abortion is discussed she wants to get an abortion and her boyfriend is very against that and she goes against him and is like no it's my body and i want to get an abortion you're giving jess it's so different than your typical film from the 70s because of that you're having a, a protagonist who has an abortion or is going to have an abortion and she's not looked down upon other than her boyfriend but her boyfriend is believed to be the serial killer in that section of the movie so it goes against the very stereotypical idea that women in horror movies are being punished because they're women. And while I do think that with Billy killing the girls, that's definitely a, um, an act of sexism. They kick ass. And they win. Um, also, I wanted to point out that the authorities are incredibly dismissive towards all of the girls whenever they talk about how they feel threatened. Um, they the authorities refuse to investigate until the male family members and boyfriends of the girls say anything. Um, so I think Black Christmas, the original, really uh, coincides with second wave feminism being about reproductive rights and women taking ownership over themselves. I think that Jess is one of the best original final girls, and yeah, it's a good movie. You should watch it. Oh yeah, I also feel like I should say that it's very interesting that in the original Black Christmas, different types of women are portrayed. Like, there's idea the idea of being like Jess and being very, like, level-headed and calm and smart but there's also like some of the girls are more wild and they get drunk but some of the girls are more caring and it very much is a movie about the ways like that women have relationships with each other so the next movie that i'm going to talk about is black christmas 2006. i think that this movie um goes along with third wave feminism but also the uh, post 9-11 early 2000s genre of horror i think some other movies that go with this as well are like house of wax um sorority row i think they're very um 
camp, if you will, and entertaining. They're sexual, but not as degrading of the women as the early, um, not the early, of the 80s slasher was. Um, and a lot of the kills are more creative. Um, I have notes written down, by the way, that's what I'm looking at. So this film, again, deals with the relationship between the women, um, but it also goes with third wave feminism, which is where they're rude to each other for like fun, but they also like, when it comes down to it, they will help each other and they do want what is best for each other. Like when the one girl gets sick, Michelle um, Trachtenberg holds her hair back and makes sure she showers and puts her to bed, stuff like that. Um, so I think that also um, this movie deals with Billy in a little bit of a different way. It talks about his family and how dysfunctional they were. It goes more in depth on that. Um, so I think that the girls definitely parallel, you know what I mean? Like when they're arguing, it's like, oh, like Billy and his family arguing. Um, but I think the women are feminine in an angry way. You know what I mean? Like the way that they talk and the way that they dress really coincides with the idea of like being angry and trying to reclaim your femininity. Um, and I also think that a point that should be t talked about is um, there is a point where Kyle, who was the boyfriend of one of the sisters, his girlfriend finds a sex tape of Kyle and another sister that has been uploaded online. And instead of, you know, yelling at the other sister, she confronts Kyle about it because She's not mad. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, she's upset. But the fact that the other sister at one point had sex with her boyfriend is here on the point that Kyle was uploading sex tapes online without permission. Um, and I think that this definitely goes with um, the fear of the digital age. Um, there's a lot of horror movies that follow the idea of... Um, specifically Japanese ones, um, you know, uh, Ring and One Miss Call and Pulse, all the, um, the fear around technology in the late 80s, late 90s, early 2000s. And the next movie that I wanted to talk about is the 2009 Black Christmas. Um, so I think that this one definitely goes with the fourth wave of feminism, specifically, you know, um, how body positive and diverse and digitally driven it is. Um, it also is about sexual assault. Um, Riley, who's the main character, she is raped by a frat member and she's ridiculed for speaking out about it. Um, Riley is trying to heal, but at the same time, all of her friends are going missing and basically any man that she talks to about it attempts to gaslight her. Um, she receives, you know, threats and nobody listens to her and this definitely uh, reminds her of when she was raped and nobody listened to her. I think that a big theme of this movie is about um, holding men accountable for their behavior and the film uses um, a cult as a way to show the way that men are able to control women. Um, but towards the end, the women win. And I think, ooh, did you hear my shoulder pop? Riley is um, able to free herself from her trauma with the line, we will never be broken. Um, but I also wanted to talk about how this movie critiques social media at one point. Um, and, you know, like hashtag activism and stuff like that, because there is a scene where Riley comes forward at a Christmas thing about being sexually assaulted and her friend Chris uploads it and posts it online without asking Riley about it, saying anything. Um, and Riley is upset about this, which is completely understandable because she didn't need her information being spread around the internet 
but Chris wasn't actually thinking about Riley when she posted online. She was thinking about how many views it'd get, how good it'd make her look. She wasn't thinking about the victim of the situation. She was thinking about her own gain that she would get out of, um, yeah. I can't think of the word. Exploitative. She was thinking about, um, she exploited Riley, essentially. Um, but yeah, so I think that all the Black Christmas movies, if you sit down and you watch them in order, they definitely show us the, uh, the different eras of feminism. I think it's very interesting because I cannot think of another horror movie that, um, you know, really, uh, goes with a movement like this so perfectly, how every film is just a wave of feminism. I thought it was very interesting the way that it was done because I don't even think, it, maybe it was planned, I don't know, but I don't, originally it definitely wasn't. They weren't sitting down and they were like, we're gonna make a remake every time that a new wave of feminism comes out. I don't think that's how it went, I think it's just how it happened. I think um, Black Christmas is a really important horror film, but not, I mean, people talk about it in the horror community, but it's not really that well known outside of the horror genre. So I think it's interesting. Anyways, a little, little bit of food for thought. Also, um, I did reference, there was an article that I found about um, going into detail about how Black Christmas goes with the different waves of feminism. I had the idea myself because I was thinking about because it's very popular to rank them, but then I was thinking about the different aspects of the film, films, um, and I was looking for information on the different waves of feminism and um, the plot summaries of Black Christmas, and I ended up coming across an article by spinsters of horror and i will be putting the link in the description she explains it a lot better than i do but yeah i hope you have a nice day and goodbye